In this video, I'm going to go ahead and continue my series on the exact values for sine by taking a look at the sine of 63 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and find the value for the sine of 63 degrees by using our sum identity for sine, which says the sine of, and we have these two angles inside here, A and B, and they're being added together, and it has this expansion. It's the sine of A, which is the first angle, times the cosine of B, which is that second angle, and then plus the sine of B times the cosine of A. So we need to get a couple of values here, A and B, that are going to be nice values to work with that will add up to 63 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that we're going to use uh, 45 degrees and 18 degrees. And of course, 45 plus 18 does equal our 63 degrees, so that's nice. And our expansion says that this will be equivalent to the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 18 degrees plus the sine of 18 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees. And of course, you'll see we have a couple of values that we're going to use up here, the sine of 18 and the sine of 72. And these two values I found from scratch earlier in this series. And uh, the links for these two values uh, are down in the description for this video. So you can go ahead and watch where these came from. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use them right now. Okay, so the sine of 45 degrees, well, that's going to be a nice one. That's just the square root of 2 over 2. And we're going to multiply that by the cosine of 18 degrees. Well, cosine and sine have a nice relationship where the cosine of one angle, in this case 18 degrees, is the same as the sine of the complement of this angle. So we're saying the sine of 72 and the cosine of 18 will have the exact same values. So I can go ahead and substitute this value in for cosine of 18 degrees. And the reason I did that, uh, again, is because I have videos for these worked out, the sine of 18 and the sine of 72. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that in there, and that's the square root of 2 over 4 multiplied by this square root expression. And to that, we're going to add the sine of 18 degrees, which is 1 fourth times this quantity, uh, the square root of 5 minus 1. And we're going to multiply that by the cosine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to go ahead and kind of clean this up a bit. So we'll do this multiplication out front. It looks like the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 makes a real 2, which will actually go ahead and cancel with that 2. So it looks like we have 1 fourth times that square root expression inside here. And to that, we're going to add, and let's go ahead and take the square root of 2 over 2 and multiply them by the 1 fourth. So it looks like we'll have the square root of 2 over 8 and then again multiplied by that expression of the square root of 5 minus 1. Okay, so this expression here, notice it's irrational, and there's no decimals. We're not uh, estimating or anything like that or rounding. This is the exact value for the sine of 63 degrees. So let's go ahead and grab a calculator and just kind of ensure that what we've done works. Okay, so here's the calculator. So we're going to go ahead and do the inverse sine of this expression, and we should get 63 degrees. So the inverse sine of, and we'll start with that 1 fourth, and we'll multiply it by that square root expression there. And to that we'll add, it looks like the square root of 2 divided by 8, and then times the square root of 5 minus 1. Close up all those parentheses, and yeah, 63 degrees. So we have here the exact value for the sine of 63 degrees, and we got that by using this sum identity for sine, and we went ahead and included also these two values, sine of 18 and sine of 72, which once again were found in previous videos from scratch and included here. So here we go, the sine of 63 degrees.